Yeah, I appreciate you joining me. Um, So where are you located now? Abuja, Nigerian Immigration Services here in Abuja, Federal Capital Territory. Okay, so Nigeria. are you able to leave? Are you able to leave or you're you're kind of there for now? No, no, I'm, I'm here on the wrongful deportation that occurred two years ago. Okay, the, the immigration judge apparently had issued an order that I should be processed as other than Mexicans uh, for a new arrival. Okay. However, the ICE, the ICE officers did not follow that instruction. Rather, they obviously transferred me to Nigeria to start there for the new arrival, but they did not aid me any further as to the order of the immigration judge. You know, uh, the, the very order should have commenced, you know, through the help of the ICE officers of the United States Department of Homeland Security. Okay. However, they did not. Yeah, oh. I was abandoned here and I'm still abandoned here. You know, mm. I tried contacting the embassy in Abuja and I was told to contact the USCIS, United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, where my citizenship was pending, okay? And I did contact them and they told me that uh, since it was expired by statute of limitation that I need to reapply. But there are certain things into my application. First of all, I was uh, I was scheduled for a fingerprint biometrics, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And that would last, yes, it is an FBI evidence that is lacking in my case studies. And they wanted to find that by the time of 2027. So okay. my application number is still valid to that extent that I'm required to provide a, 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 the, FBI, the, the missing FBI evidence, which would again conclude my case. So in as much as my case was administratively closed on August uh, 28th of 2017, it still was required is 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 a requisite of of um, fingerprint biometrics as the missing FBI evidence that it would be conclusive as to the closure of my case because my case is a special case you know since two thousand four um, the immigration judge ordered that I be removed to Nigeria however I was abandoned uh, in prison where I subsequently. Um, secured an appellate relief, uh, which was a habeas corpus, in fact. And uh, upon immigration law, uh, I was supposed to be granted relief on that um, habeas corpus relief. And um, I was um, in 2015. The, the government uh, uh, issued an approbation okay. you know, to me yeah, where I'd had to choose whether to continue as a non-immigrant because my status had expired at that time, whether to continue with a non-immigrant status or to change that very non-immigrant status. I elected to change the, the non-immigrant status and it was granted. So I uh, replaced my expired resident permit, which was the green card. And also I um, applied for citizenship and they were all granted. So while I was waiting for the interview of the citizenship, I was subsequently arrested for probation violation. So at the time the interview would have taken place, I was in jail and um, the, the appeal, I, I won the probation violation on appeal. I squashed the derogatory information on appeal on, uh, only on March, I mean, on, in, in, in 2020, August 2020, I finally secured an appellate relief, but I had already lost my interview date. So according to Arizona law, I was supposed to reapply and I reapplied, rather the, the, the court, the original jurisdiction um, uh, informed me that I should contact the um, immigration immediately or the appropriate federal agency well, of course, I'm in Nigeria at the time, the court ruled on that. And I've been trying to, you know, uh, contact the federal agency as were required by the court order. And uh, that's where I am. Okay. Um, I hadn't, the embassy here in, 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 in uh, 
in Abuja, like I said earlier, uh, had informed me to contact USCIS, and USCIS uh, had told me that I needed to reapply. And uh, but that's not what is in my FOIA Freedom of Information Act. What was in there was that there is still a, a fingerprint um, uh, scheduled for me in this case number. Therefore, I could not reapply. So I'm in between a rock and a hard place. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at evidence here, which I discovered from FOIA, that um, even on, on the internet, my status on the internet is that I'm scheduled for a fingerprint. Okay, and that uh, presumably would last to 2027. So I cannot reapply and abandon the granted the original application. So that's what is in me here. But I'm I'm willing because I'm training. I've been training since I got here, no, though not in boxing. I've been you know physically training myself and waiting if any promoters would uh, contact me for a fight because all these things would have uh, been helped. Uh, or, or at soccer, if I uh, had an attorney, immigration attorney in the United States who can push my file and, and get it done. And, you know, it will require money. So at this time, um, I would uh, take a fight, you know, just to, you know, um, uh, uh, pay my uh, fa uh, my court fees and uh, attorney fees right. to, yeah, well, yeah, to get my but, uh, in here. So that's one of the reasons I want to get back to boxing. However, I still want to continue my uh, career, you know. <laughs> well, you know, I, yeah. I spoke to a few people telling, t told them I'm going to talk to you. And uh, do you remember Shannon Briggs? Yeah, I know Shannon Briggs, yeah. Shannon, <laughs> I, I haven't met, we have never met, no, you know, but I know, I know Shannon Briggs. Yeah, I, 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 know Shannon Briggs. I told him, I go, what about an exhibition with Ike? He said, let's do it. So maybe. What do you think? Oh, so, yeah, yeah that's, that would be great. That would be great. You know, I, in uh, 20, in, in 1999, uh, you know, um, promoter Boberum offered me an exhibition at the Mandela Bay, and I refused it because, uh, you know, I was still hot at that. And I'm still, you know, because the thing is that I never wanted to do any exhibitions, you know, because uh, I, I, I hadn't concluded my career. Exhibitions right. probably would have been set for, you know, retirees or former champions. But, you know, I'm still hungry to become the heavyweight champion of the world. And that's why I elected to stay in fighting even, even now. So, you know, exhibition is a good. I saw Tyson and Roy Jones fight exhibition. It looks like a fight, you know. It yeah. almost compared. But for the monetary sake, you know, I would do you know, I need some money to, to get back to the United States, you know, and uh, continue my career and my property. Everything is in the United States. Could you believe that? I was lifted with the pretense that, you know, I'm going to where I'll be heard on this immigration matter. That's what the, you know, squad leader told me on arrest. You know, as they whisked me out of the United States, they said that they were taking you to where you're going to be heard. You know, I showed them my appointment, my interview, and I, you know, I said this is a, a proof of my legal status. However, and notwithstanding that, I won my appeal, the probation um, that would had uh, stinted uh, the consideration of my legal status. That I, that this is my legal status as provided by law. They said they were they are taking me to where my case would be heard. Right. And yes, of course, Nigerian immigration services bosses, you know, the directors have heard my case and they have written in my behalf to the embassy. And there was no response since December of 2021. So wow. it's like, uh, well, government is government and not individual. And I'm here on the, on the, on the contest that I am still under the government supervision and orders, and uh, there's nothing else I can do. But I've been advised that if I had a fight, I can take a fight. They had given me the permission that if if I if since I'm training, I've been training since two years here, and some, and uh, that if there were a fight, and that I should take a fight if I wanted to. So you know, I love to fight, and uh, my God, 24 years, you know, there's nothing wow. else I would want this life or world and not just to get back in the ring. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, yeah.
yeah, yeah, I will. You know what? In the you know yeah. what? I, I interviewed David Tua a few months ago. Um, you did? I did. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's in uh, New Zealand. He's he 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 uh, he has his own gym. He still works out all the time. Um, yeah. We, we talked about your fight. I mean, that fight to this day, I think, is the most punches thrown by heavyweights, right? In ten rounds or twelve rounds. Yeah. Yes, of course, of course, we did great on that fight. But, uh, you know, it was, to me, um, uh, it was, uh, well, Tua was punching, notwithstanding, I was punching, okay? We, you know, you cannot take anything away from, you know, my attempt on tour. But the thing is that um, if we were to redo it, I wouldn't have thrown that much of a, of a punch. You know, I would have sat very well upon my uh, punches and execute the clouds. But yeah, uh, I don't think that a uh, um, punch starts, you know, <laughs> would have mattered in a fight of such nature. I we would have, um, I preferred, you know, <laughs> a knockout and, uh, you know, than the uh, tedious uh, unanimous decision, but that's, you know, the type of competition it was, you know what I mean? You know, no, nobody knocked out Tua his whole career. <laughs> I know Tua has tough head. He can he has got defense and also his he can take a punch. So was, um, they are to punch this. Who did you when you were uh training when you were active? Was there any big name guys that you had sparred with that that you know like Tyson or Lennox or anybody like that back then? No, not at all. Not at all. I can tell you that I. Uh, uh, what happened was that my uh, I had the, the up to, up until tour I had uh, such a uh, uh, sponsorship uh, that uh, allowed me to pay or even before the sponsorship my sparring partners came to me came to the gym home of champions and in Dallas Texas and they would spar with me even before we established home of champions but the fact of the matter is that when I never the idea of going out to spa with anybody was still on the you know pipeline. We never harvested that. We never had that you know executed. But you know uh, we wanted. But still, I was winning. You know, I didn't know when it could have happened. Whether or not after birth would no, I don't think so. I was um, you know ele elevating myself per fight. And when I challenged the champions severally, 97 and 99, after those two wins, it appears that I am the, the man in the house. And, uh, you know, I am already treated as a champion with a proposal of multi-million dollars by, uh, uh, by HBO via my manager at that time. So the thing is that uh, aware that uh, I, I couldn't have gone anywhere to spar with anybody including um, whether Tyson or Holyfield or even Lewis. I don't think that I would have had uh, the, 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 the escape, you know, to, to go to their gyms and spar with them. It would have been an honor. It would have been a pleasure. But, you know, like I said, I was busy challenging them rather after those two fights and more. And uh, we were ready to take on the championship of the world at that time. Yeah, you uh I remember when you beat Chris Bird, which was I don't know if it was an upset, but I mean you know, Chris had never lost before you, right? Yours you were his first defeat, I think. No, 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 yeah, no, no, it was not an upset to me because the um of course uh Bird was um you know an undefeated fighter and I was undefeated and I was still undefeated, but the fact that uh, the way I see fights I didn't think it was an upset, you know. First of all, I made more money than he did on that fight, so I was go coming there as the, you know, the guy, you know, who rips the canvas, not not one. Of course, he would have beaten me on points. I, I mean, I was trying to match his punching ability and his elusiveness, and I, I and I did that. Uh, consequently, which stopped the fight in the fifth round. But uh, uh, I didn't think it was an upset. I believe that if there were going to be a, a, a knockout, it's going to be by me. And uh, um, I'm much stronger than him. Yeah. And um, he, even though he wouldn't be there, as the Vitua were, I, 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 to exchange punches, to make the punches come out, uh, 
but uh, I believe that you know if I cut him, he's gonna he's gonna he's submit to my to my ferocity. So I uh, yeah, uh, I I don't think it was an upset at all. At at my age, I've seen Tua. Tua was a better record, twenty seven, and when I beat him, and not twenty six. So upset would have been, uh, you know, that he were better than Tua. Right. You know, yeah. before. Right, right. That's a good point. Yeah, you, he, he, you know, his mistake, I think, was that he stopped against the ropes and was trying to slip you. And he should have kept his, he should have kept far away. Then he would have maybe had a chance. Maybe. He didn't fight that way, though. He said he sparred that way in, in, in the gym and at home. But I didn't see him when he fought Jimmy Tonda. He was obviously the aggressor. When he fought Luna Butler, he was the aggressor. Bird always were the aggressor on his fights. So he he got caught on the rope as he confessed. The fact of the matter is that uh, uh, that it was a fight and it's, it, one person must win. That's how it is. Or draw, you know. But you know, I don't care. He became a world two time. He went and dismantled and disrupted Vitalik Klitschko in Germany. So, you know, that kind of, you know, elevated his status and came back and beat, you know, Holyfield defeating Tua again. So, yeah, he, when you look at his resume, you know, he was not a cheap, you know, a, 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 a cheap changer. So he, he was a dominant force as to the opponents. If he, he beat Mac, uh, Jimmy McLean uh, and uh, yeah. I, I mean, I believe that we should have had a rematch uh, than sitting in j in prison for no reasons. Oh, honestly, I, I don't believe in uh, you know pre-accusation and prosecutorial discretion that occurred in my case. But you know, boxing was life. Everybody loved it. We it could have been you know when proven in two thousand one that I were competent to stand trial. When, it's, when it was proven that um, the state's, state had lost its witness, the witness already had perjured herself. When it was proven that I was under medication, certain factors existed to the fact that uh, we could have returned. The state's expert doctors testified that I should be allowed to box since 2001 or 2000, but the court, the court did not yield to it until 2007, when I was um, subsequently overturned by uh, procedural or meritorious reasons in the court, and uh, you know uh, that's where I stand in the uh, in uh, in Nevada case. But like I said, Bird and I should have had a rematch because he his his stock went up after I were gone. You know, right. in 99, yeah, like I said, he defeated Vitalik Klitschko. And also uh, on a world championship fight, and also you know defeated Holyfield on a vacant IBF. That vacant IBF, you know, I was there first before he got there. We could have fought for it. None of this guy even tore. You know, tore fought gallantly, but he didn't become a world champion. But the fact of the matter is that you know the very record that had uh, 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 stinted his uh, capacity. Into in 97 could have been rematched, but he never talked about it. He never contacted me. Mm. I could not have been, you know, enhanced to a felonious imprisonment, whereas the case, in fact, was a misdemeanor. So the thing, you know, there was seizure. I was seized as a person and property, and it remained to the record when. Uh, um, uh, the matter was overturned in 2007 and continued, you know, in prison till 2014. So it's like, uh, was it boxing that caused it, or that you know the case, uh, my case was such complex, a complex case that the, you know, the the government must use to establish a program such that it can be used. <laughs> In the future, if something like that ever happened, you know, someone like me who had the capacity to serve, you know, as either as a sacrosanct or, you know, um, uh, utilitarianism, philosophy of utilitarianism, where most people would want me to remain in prison or in, uh, for the sake of, for the type of immigration and uh, um, the type of visa that was issued to me. 
you know, some say it was legal, some said it was illegal, but the fact was that uh, um, I wouldn't have preferred to sit in prison and not fight, okay? No matter how much money um, they're gonna pay me, you know, the government conceded to me $70 million is sitting there in the United States. And uh, I, I wouldn't have taken any penny to sit out when others were fighting <clears throat> and becoming world champions, you know. So the, the, the perseverance held me up throughout the years in prison and I continued to train and uh, exercise hope that uh, one day I will be back in the ring and I will secure what in fact is mine and that's becoming a world champion, you know what I mean? Right, right. So, so have you been actually boxing at all? Hitting? I mean, I saw you put a video out of hitting the bag recently. That was in Abuja. I never, no, I hadn't been in gym actually. I it just briefly in 2016, but no one had the information. But the thing is that uh, I only trained in the regular gym. I never had a boxing pleasure, a boxing gym to to had such fun and that was my first time since a long time so you know if i had a fight now i would make that the optimum training regimen i'll go back to boxing gym otherwise just just uh, you know training and keeping health healthy in event there will be a, a release here i'm waiting for the embassy and the immigration to call me and schedule my interview or direct me on how the new arrival IJ order, immigration judge's order, which had me as that status as process other than Mexican OTM new arrival since September 23, uh, uh, 2020. I would have been processed from United States, you know, but they chose to bring me to Nigeria where I'd been dumped, if you will, at the Nigerian Immigration Services since then. And there had not been any, any contacts, whatever, from the USCIS or, um, I mean, from the ICE, not USCIS, the operation uh, that took me out as to how to, uh, you know, uh, proceed with the new arrival, which was the court's order, the judge, uh, immigration judge's order. So I'm, I'm, I'm stumped by such abandonment so and uh, that's 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 about it you know i'm waiting here and um, you know attempting sometimes to make contact with the united states but they are all fishy they are never you know strong as a court order would had uh, imposed you know what i mean so right. that's what i am now well wow. um... and obviously yeah, I'm using boxing. Hopefully, hopefully, boxing would uh, restore my identification and the reason thereof to um, the court's order. Right, right. Okay. I mean, hopefully, you know, maybe, maybe some kind of of, of a fight can be made, even if it's not, even if it's an exhibition, because you know, exhibitions now, you know, Floyd Mayweather's doing them. I'm sure you've seen that. Um, I know. Yeah, they're they're pretty popular now, especially for fighters, you know, in their fifties. I know it's not about age; it's whether they can be knocked out. I'm, I'm, if I'm as beaten, I'm going for a knockout. You know that. So I'm sorry. I don't know why there had not been a lot of, um, you know, stoppages. I don't know why exhibition is. And I don't like the idea. Even in my in my sparring, everything to me is well, almost a fight. I cannot right. do. Um, uh, I, I can't do, I, I'm the fighter that, you know, exhibition, if it was for exhibition, uh, I, I really take it as the, it's not serious uh, because even okay. inspiring, Those are serious. Uh, my sparring, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very serious in contact and uh, or combat whenever it is, uh, but Did like you I said, I, were you able to see Razor Ruddick with, and James Tony that exhibition? My God, that was the one. I wouldn't. I. I. I, I saw. Uh, no, man. First, they weren't in shape. Second, it's like uh, a joke. I mean, are you trying to start people? I mean, exhibition. What is it? They, they were world champions, you know. Okay, so you don't need that unless you are asking for aid, money, 
you know, tickets and all whatnot. I don't think that uh, I'll be in such capacity, you know, they were and exhibiting. I, I, I can't do that. I'm only good for fighting. I can't do the exhibition thing, you know, because... I felt, uh, like, I felt like if you saw their fight, they were trying to, like, raise a rod. They were going for it. They were trying to hurt each other after about the second round. Uh, uh, but second, I saw the first one. Uh, the first round, I uh, didn't continue just at the first round. Oh, because, no, uh, no. The, uh, the, the, the one was taking it so easy. It's like a part, you know, a part of their body. body. So I thought, you know, they were just uh, identifying themselves as former champions, you know, great warriors oh. and all that. So people would want to see anything, you know. But oh, I, 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 I wouldn't. I stopped at the first round. I couldn't continue. Because, <laughs> try to try yeah, to watch, try to watch it again. They really start like they're trying. They started trying to take each other's heads off after like the second third. Oh, round. oh really? Yeah, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. Razor Otic was throwing the smash. Everything. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. I, I probably I'll need to go and watch it again. I didn't. I stopped at round one because it was so slow. <laughs> I didn't know that they they picked it up at the subsequent rounds. That's good. Then that is good. But uh, I was thinking that they should be in better position, better shape, and then you know come there to you know to hurt themselves. You know, boxing right. is about safety. It's also, you know, if they were in better shape, they, uh, then obviously there's a, a very good chance that they would uh, not hurt each other. Right. But, right. Um, you know, you know how it is. They're still fighters by yeah. um, by heart. So after you get through punches thrown at you, you start you start going hard. You, you just do so much yeah. soft yes, stuff. Yes, yes. You know, training um, is good. Preparation is good. How many amateur fights did you have? Um, I, I, it depends. Uh, and I'm doing. The record stays up to 20 seconds because uh, I I don't see, I, 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 I didn't count well at the time I put in the amateur records to the documentaries that I made. You know, I had uh, from 1990 uh, and uh, all the amateurs that I had in Nigeria, maybe not that many, you know. Then when I immigrated to the United States in 1993, I did uh, the boys and girls um, thing in Arlington and uh, Texas Golden Globes and uh, you know Dallas Golden Globes and uh, Milwaukee. So uh, for National Golden Globes and uh, those were it. After the National Golden Globes, you know I won one and I uh, lost one by split decision and you know, I turned pro. I said, okay, well you know. This thing, I'm not waiting for Atlanta till 1996. I, uh, I proceeded with uh, uh, with turning pro of that 1994 October 13. So I I turned pro, and uh, since then uh, I remained undefeated. So I I basically knew that I was adapted for uh, um, for a professional career rather than uh, amateur. So I don't make so much credence. I, I traveled, I, I was an international champion in Nigeria, of course, uh, before immigrating in 1993 to the United States. Right. You know, I traveled to China. I secured the first place. I defended uh, the, the, the international the tournament they had in Nigeria. Every year, they called it uh, IBB, you know, international tournament. I won that two times. That's why I defeated Duncan Dokiwari for two times before immigrating. Duncan Wari, the, uh, the Atlanta uh, bronze medalist, the 1996 right. Olympic. Yes, Duncan right, right. Dokiwari. That's why I stopped him first in 92, and then 93, I decisioned him and uh, before immigrating to the United States. And they plan was to remain in the United States rather than, you know, returning back to go to Atlanta in 96. But um, again, that's what happened. I, I wanted to become a world champion and there's no other place to be a world champion than the United States. To this yeah. day, you're still one of the most feared uh, punchers, heavyweight fighters. People talk about you a lot. Um, you know, and you fought in such a great era, you know, with guys like Lennox and Mike and Holyfield, you know, and you still were kind of, you still were, were standing above a lot of those people in terms of your skill, even in that golden era, you know? 
Yeah, it was it was very memorable. I I regret the fact of my departure. Yeah. If in fact, if in fact that I were to turn the clock backwards, I would have, uh, you know, remained uh, in boxing than uh, being in prison. Like I said, you know, the matter was not so much of a criminal factor because there were underlying evidence that would have, you know, escaped or even exonerated me. The 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 matter was purely the, the, uh, what is it, diplomatic Nigeria and the United States and what they had was that it would have been better if I remained out of boxing with such enormous capacity uh, and and lucrative interest that sought everybody trying to wage my existence uh, and uh, making money and about it so even i was audited to the extent that when audit occurred in prison 2000 2004 it was even concealed the judgments about me were all unpublished so it was mainly a a a, a, a political issue of these these two countries and my career if i must say and uh, they had that interest in how they treated that and finally relieved me and still relieving me in the approbations and uh, relief that I had received from them, you right. know, by being the person who motioned the court in a complaint and, and won when the court denied them. I went on to the Supreme Court. I went to the appellate court and had a reversal or remand uh, a remand uh, to the superior court or district court that issued those orders against me. So I showed such competence. I, I, I won the heart of the judicial um, a branch of the government to the extent that I was ruled in favor even against the state and uh, against, you know, uh, 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 thought physicists um, uh, of attorneys who represented me. So I, I believe that I was raised on appeal on those appeals and that made me a better person, notwithstanding, you know, my capacity, which again, exuded in such um, uh, efforts. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that um, I was recognized the way I was recognized and uh, uh, it's it just life. I've got to, you know, uh, pick myself up and dust myself and proceed on and move on, you know, I wish anyone would want to fight me at this time, you know, as opposed to, you know, using my age and saying that, oh, well, he's old and what now. So what? No, no, you can defeat me then if I'm old, you know, right. and there's no argument with that, you know, so you know, go ahead and take care of me. That's what I want. But uh, you can't say I'm old and therefore you run away from me. Right, you, right. You've got to say, you know, <laughs> I'm vulnerable by age, but you don't say that. Rather, you say that I'm old and no one. But you know, it's, it's just uh, no. you know, in a comfort, you know, it doesn't I'm, make sense. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the word out. See if anybody wants to to fight. I, you know, I speak to a bunch of people, and I'll see if anybody's interested. And I'll, I'll definitely let you know. Oh, please, that would be great help. You know, that would be great uh, soccer. Uh, assistance. Uh, if anyone can, uh, you know, stand up to me, I would really appreciate that. You know, yeah. I, I respect so much, and uh, you know, it's 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 part of what I am praying every day that uh, fighters sh should stand up, you know, and just give me a shot. Right. <laughs> Excuse me. And and you know, stop playing nationality discrimination. Okay. Well, or any other reason. What, whatever yeah for sure um well look i appreciate you talking to me let's uh let's stay in touch we'll talk again good that would be great thank you mr mark uh what about your friend um jeremy uh yes 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 jeremy he's he doesn't really fight anymore he's he's in california i still talk to him okay well yeah. say hi to him you know? i will i will all right all right man i appreciate you talking to me let's stay in touch all right, okay, let's do it. All right, take thank care. you very much. Yeah, thank oh, you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. Appreciate it.